Hey guys, Dan and I'm Wes from Next Furniture Motorsports and today we're going to show you how to install our corner armor. All right, so the whole idea behind the corner armor, if you are just getting into wheeling, rock crawling, all of that, you've probably seen a couple people take out part of their hard top when they're in a narrow canyon. That's a very good reason to take off your hard top, take off your doors, basically ditch anything that you might not want to damage. These do not unbolt. These are integral to your tub. These are one of the few steel pieces that is actually welded to the rest of the body. If you are going to hit something on the trail, you can just bolt on a new door, a new windshield frame, go buy a new hard top. The corner, on the other hand, once you dent that, uh, you're going to a body shop. You're probably gonna watch this seam right here split open eventually, if you hit it hard enough. It's a lot easier to install corner armor before you get any of that body damage because it'll not only prevent the body damage, but it'll cut down on the amount of labor you have to put into correcting the sheet metal with a hammer or a dolly or you know real body work tools or taking it to a shop to have it done. From about here back to this body seam, you're gonna want to install rib nuts. Hence why we have the rivet nut gun out on the table. And then the back here, you can see we've, we've already got the tail lamp out because we're gonna to need to get into the back side of here to use the conventional hardware. Anywhere that you can use conventional hardware, you should. It's <laughs> gonna let you use a washer, distribute uh, any sort of pressure or force on the body a lot better. So we do leave a cutout here for the factory tail lamps. If you've got an, the advanced safety group on yours, you're gonna have blind spot detectors built into your tail lamps. That's why they stick so far out. If you wanna retain that, well, you're gonna to wanna to retain that by using your factory tail lamp. And if you wanna ditch that and go to something as recessed as possible, then you wanna look at one of the multiple options that is out there for replacement tail lamp, which is a flush or a recessed uh, LED conversion. And Jeep did give us this really nice deep pocket that sort of recesses the tail lamp in. That's why we don't mount the tail lamp up on top and ditch that cutout because you'd actually be sticking your tail lamp out further than that. All right, so pre-install notes before you go installing this. If you guys are painting this, you're gonna wanna do a dry run first. You're gonna wanna do the whole install and then pull this thing off and send it to powder or paint after you've already installed it. That way, you're not scratching off your paint, your powder coat, any of that while you're doing the install because we're actually gonna use pretty much all of these holes as our template for getting things drilled. And if you've already got this painted or thickly powder coated, well, this drill bit's gonna take that powder coat right off. And we do offer this in aluminum and steel. So if you've got the steel corner armor, that's obviously going to create a rust problem. So start with these bare metal because there are some edges on the back here. What I would recommend, if you're really worried about your paint, is that you take some blue painter, painter's tape and just wrap the back of this really quick because you're gonna be putting it on, taking it off, putting it on, taking it off one more time to have it painted and then install the third time. And we'll show you why we have to put that on, take it off that many times if you're gonna be painting it. Uh, but most of it is just to make sure that all of our rivet nuts are aligned perfectly because you don't really get a chance to uh, move the hole after it's drilled. You only get one chance of doing this, so you wanna make sure it's done right the first time. Okay, so before you start this project, these are the tools you're probably gonna need. You're gonna need a 15 64 drill bit, you're gonna need a 3 8 drill bit. You're gonna need a rib nut tool like we talked about that you'll need to get off Amazon. You're gonna need a drill, some painter's tape, and then you'll get our lovely quarter 20 rib nut hardware and nut and bolt hardware, which are all quarter 20s. And tool for and your hardware. And you'll need this too, which is a four millimeter Allen wrench. All right, so all of the edges on the back side of these are already gonna come deburred. And these do ship DA sanded on the outside. So that is gonna cut down on the amount of paint prep that you're gonna have to do. But since we're doing a dry run on fitting these before they go off to powder, which is actually what he's gonna be doing on this Jeep because he wants to basically paint match them to the white, is we're just gonna go to our back corners here, even deburred some of these 
edges can catch. If you've got paint that's in really good shape on your Jeep and you want to keep it that way, you might want to do this. If you've already dragged your Jeep down the side of every canyon in the four corners, then it might not matter and you can just skip this step altogether. Arts and crafts. Now you may have noticed that we've already got the factory tail lamps out. You are going to want to be able to get to the back side of this up here, down here, all of that. You can get your hand in. These are held in from just beyond the hard top here where you can't see. These little guys live under a little plastic uh, trim piece. Pop that trim piece up with a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver will do the trick. Then grab your 10 millimeter socket that you can never find. This little guy is spring loaded in to the back here and is what holds the tail lamp in. Once that's out, you should be able to just pull it straight out. It is held in a little with a little bit of tension on the outside here and also pops in right here in the middle. After that, you'll want to retract this little red tab. Then you can press down on this black plastic tab on the clip and do take your time with this. These are not fun. If you break the harness or pull too hard, uh, ask me how I know. And if you've uh, already ripped your tail lamp out on a rock and it came out, then you know that it was probably dangling from this. And if it was at speed, sometimes it damages the wiring and it's not fun to repair. So take your time with the plastic. It should come out pretty easy. All right, so a couple of frequently asked questions on these installs that we get. Does it matter what side I start with? Is a question that not enough people have asked because sometimes you start on the passenger side and you do have a little bit of wiggle room as to where you can mount this. The driver's side, on the other hand, is pretty much gonna key into the fuel door. Start with the driver's side. You're gonna know exactly where to start just based on where this fuel door is. This is about the gap that you wanna see to the rear door here. Now, if you start on the passenger side, you won't necessarily have something to lock you in right where you need to be with this gap set. There's not something to index that. If you start on the driver's side here, you can measure this and actually go mark that on the passenger side and get them as close to symmetrical as possible that way. Then if we come to the back here, something else you're gonna notice is, yeah, you can get a hand in right here. We purposefully underbend this section right here. You're gonna be able to get a bolt in here just fine and then close this gap. You'll just get a clamp in here and close this off at the very end. The reason we do that is because, well, the smaller a bend is, the more error we are likely to incur on the press brake. Uh, if we overbend this and you have to unbend it a little bit, there's a chance you could put a kink in it. Now, if we underbend it and you just push it in at the end, it's gonna help cover up the damage up here and it's gonna end up in the right spot. All right, so you've got the tail lamp out, leave the fuel door in. So now we're gonna start C-clamping this into place. And I am using these guys with the um, what's left of the, the rubber that welding hasn't melted off, the C-clamps. You can get these at your local hardware store or uh, <clears throat> Harbor Freight. And you do wanna be mindful of where this body shape is right here. I'm actually putting the pad up inside on the flat part of the body before sucking this in. And you can see it's already starting to uh, almost fit like a glove right there. So one thing you'll want to take a look at is just take a couple steps back and make sure that this is level with your body. And honestly, this is easier if your top is off. We're not going to bother with pulling the hard top off of this one today. But if you do have the top off, it does give you a couple more ways to get some C-clamps on here, uh, or these quick clamps rather. We've just got the three of them here, and it is lining up pretty well, but sand back, we did notice that the very front edge use a little bit of adjustment down. So we went ahead and did that. You've got the tape on the back. It's not gonna scratch the paint off. It's pretty much ready to start using this as a template for some drilling. All right, so we've got three of these quick clamps holding it on. You're gonna notice that you might have just a tiny bit of a gap up here. We're only holding it on with three clamps. Once you've got these bolts all in place later, if you're seeing an eighth inch gap back here right now, I wouldn't worry about it too much. And if you look look at it long ways from the back here, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. There's a tiny bit of a bow because we're only holding the front and the back. Uh, if you see something bigger than that, because you've got some body damage, you may want to take down the, low, the high spot. The low spots aren't so much of a concern, but if you've got a high spot pushing it out, 
that's where you might want to look at doing some body work. Uh, this Jeep is in great shape. There's no damage to the sheet metal back here. So this is about what you want to see uh, before you start drilling your holes. So if, if you are looking around for gaps, you might notice that there's just a tiny bit of a gap right here. There's actually a bend hidden right here and a bend and a bend and a bend. We do all of that because we've got compound bends on the Jeep. So these are gonna close up a little bit once you have those bolts kind of pulling it back in. Thank you, Mark, for letting us all right, so what Wes is doing is starting with the 1564th drill bit that we talked about and using this as a template. We're starting at the very front of the Jeep and only coming back to this body seam. Everything in front of this, you're not gonna be able to get your hand to the back side of it unless you pull the fuel door and you don't have a fuel door on the passenger side. So if you wanna install these symmetrically, go ahead and drill all of these out for rib nuts right now at this stage and you don't have to drill the rest of them after that. We're actually going to stop drilling, pull that off, get the rivet nuts on, and save those for last after this is already bolted to the body. All right, so now that Wes has all of those holes drilled, uh, forward of that body line, we can go ahead and unclamp this guy and we're just gonna set it aside for a minute. And the reason we're not drilling any of these in the back, uh, more so than anything, is right now all of the holes that are present on the side of the Jeep, all of them get drilled out to the bigger size. And if you go drilling out the rest of these in the back and forget that they don't need uh, upsized, which can be done, then you're gonna be looking for a bigger washer and you're removing more material than you have to. That is a really nice tight fit. So Wes, you up that to a 2564. 2564. Is that what so, that was? Yeah, we we do not manufacture these rib nuts in-house. We do buy these from suppliers. We do occasionally yeah. see a batch. Usually it's the whole batch. It'll have a little bit of variance in size. So before we went drilling all of these out, we started with just test fitting the first first one. Found out it was a little bit too tight of a fit and bumped it up to that extra 64th of an inch there. So with these rib nut tools, they are adjustable right here. And what this does is this suggests like how, how much tension you can put on these. I always try and take a test one and run it against a washer so I can make sure that once this is all the way clamped like this, you're getting the most bite on this. You also wanna make sure that when you go to put these rib nuts in, you're getting full thread contact. You don't want to try and do them with it half thread because it will, it will pull those threads out. So you want full thread contact when you go to put them in like this. That way when you go to like squeeze it, it comes down. That's what's going to compress into that guy and grab onto that sheet metal or that washer in this case. You want to make sure it is all the way against the body. So you're pushing in. that and then you take the centerpiece unscrew it now you have yourself rib nut all right so now that we got all the nut certs in here all good uh, we're gonna go ahead and take the tape off this we're gonna go ahead and put the hardware in right here. And then as we get the hardware tightened, that's when we'll start working our way around the back corner here. Okay, so now that we got all the bolts in, we got everything tightened on this end of things. Uh, what we're gonna do now is I have these clamps right here so I can bring in the panel, suck it in right here. I got this one clamped tight right here so we can drill these three holes. And as soon as we get these three holes drilled, then we're gonna basically work our way around the backside here. As you come around, you can just clamp this in, drill the holes, and then you can clamp it in that way. 
Okay, now that we're gonna be drilling these holes over here, I wanna make a reminder that we're gonna be switching back to the 1564 size drill bit. Okay, so now that we got these bolts uh, tightened over here, now we're gonna clamp these little ends down and uh, we'll get these last holes drilled. Okay, now that we got all the hardware on, uh, we'll be taking this uh, particular set of corner armor back off because this customer is elected to get it powder coated. So like we pointed out earlier in the video, uh, please, we highly suggest getting all the holes drilled, getting it all bolted on before you do any powder coating or painting to your corner armor. We do install the driver's side first. Since you have the gas filler neck on that side, it helps you locate everything. You know where to kind of pull measurements so you can do this side because with this side, we don't have that over here. One tip I always do is I always measure from the top to like right here, make sure my measurement's the same from here to the other side. And then I measure from here to here on this side and I'll do it the same on the other side. And then basically when you're looking at the door, obviously you have a little bit of shuffle back and forth. I just make sure this is like looking pretty tight right here. And then that pretty much determines like basically where you're gonna end up up here. nuts and bolts in these three holes right here on the passenger side. They're pretty hard to get to, so what I like to do is take the nut, put it in the end of the wrench, um, and then I'll take tape, put it over the back side like this, kind of hold a little bit. You can take the washer and if you just barely kind of put some tape on it like this, about like that, and you can reach it in there. and put your nut and washer on there. All right, everyone, want to say thanks again for joining us on doing this corner armor install. Hopefully this answers any questions you guys may have with getting their corner armor installed. The order of assembly as far as doing the driver's side first, passenger side second. And the best thing is that either A, hopefully you can put it on before you do any damage, but if you have some damage already, slap this stuff on and looks good as new again. Thank you guys for watching the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And hopefully we'll catch you for the next one. See you guys on the trail. Four. That's right. Four shots. Oh my God, this is five shots. I am stand corrected. Uh, and it's not empty yet. That's why, that's why we're not letting Wes film yet. Because he has to get all the way through all five shots before this becomes intelligible. So all the coffee beans have been left on the east side of the Rockies. Wes is uh, at home building his underground bunker where he will be uh, growing his own coffee plants. Oh yeah. You're gonna be so sick of our voices again after this week. It's like suffering through the bottom of the muffin. <laughs> Since everybody's just there for the top where the sprinkles are. Some seed pipes on here. Uh, you're not going to uh, put your hand to the back side of it. Um, done. Approaching with the drill bit. <laughs> Watch me like just throw the battery in it. <laughs> Tyler, help us.